Hello everyone, Cool Guy here, and what a big day for Destiny fans. Game Informer Magazine digital subscribers got access to a lot of new Taken King information. Now in this video, I wanted to outline what we know so far, but also highlight some of the key aspects of this article. And we also want to know what you guys think and what you're most interested in. Now there's a lot to cover, so let's start with the various ways on how user experience will change in our menus. Below your emblem selection, equipable emotes will now be available, and speaking of emblems, there's also going to be a shader and emblem kiosk near the outfitter at the tower, and this is going to have all the shaders you've obtained on your account, as well as all the shaders that you've yet to find, and then it's going to show you how to find them. The same goes for your emblems. And I know in my vault, my inventory, and even my postmaster, it's full of emblems, it's got cloaks everywhere, it's going to be nice not having to worry about these things, about deleting them or even moving them around. This change will give us a little bit of relief in our inventory troubles, but they're still working on our vault space. Bungie says, we're bumping into technical limitation for vault space. We're exploring options of getting stuff out of players' inventories via a kiosk we've placed around the tower, but we're still working toward a solution that we're excited about. But still, the shader and emblem change is going to help us out a little bit, and they also added some visuals to help the player too. Like holding L2 on the pause screen, it's going to give an instant glimpse at the energy type equipped for each weapon. New item and subclass visual icons have been redesigned for quick recognition at a glance. And I thought of the example I have right now with my three messengers. One has arc, solar, and one void. And with this, I can easily just hold L2 and find the solar one, no problem. Your intellect, discipline, and strength is going to look a little bit different too. It's now going to tell you in seconds what your cooldown is when messing around with that class build, instead of it being that percentage that we've always had. It's going to be nice to know that you have, let's say, 35 seconds on your discipline for your grenade cooldown, and then knowing that you can cut it down even more when you start focusing on it. You are going to have a full numerical representation when building your guardian for your next adventure. And maybe you might get a brand new piece of armor and you want to see how it looks. You maybe got that new Cyril's Pulse Rifle. You can now change your displayed weapon and see how it looks at the tower. Crucible and Vanguard marks will now be replaced by Legendary marks, and Armor materials will replace Hardronic Essence, Sapphire Wire, and Plasteel Plating. And then we all have our factions, and with the Taken King, you will now be able to pledge allegiance to gain reputation for your faction, instead of wearing that class item that you always had. It's going to be so awesome to actually pledge my allegiance to Dead Orbit, because right now, we already kind of do it, and it's going to be nice that you can actually do it in-game. You can also turn into unwanted materials like Motes of Light, Armor Materials, Ammo Sense, and even Weapon Parts to that faction and gain reputation through them. The Cryptarch is also getting a little bit of a change. They say that the Cryptarch will reliably provide rewards that match Ingrams that you give them, and it's nice to know that they're still looking at this. I mean, players remember Legendary Ingrams turning into Blues, they worked on that, and in Year 2 they're looking at RNG as a whole. Now, RNG will reward based on what you have, and in an attempt to avoid you getting those same weapons over and over, it's going to try to give you gear that's new to you. And they continue by saying, as an alternative to sharding those new high-powered legendary weapons or armor, you can now improve an item by sacrificing another piece of the same gear slot. And that's just pretty cool stuff. Perk customization will also be available on your weapons, your armor, class items, and even your ghost shell. This will also introduce increased power and light. Now the gunsmith also has a reputation meter that can be leveled by testing out common weapon prototypes. These test weapons have a task assigned to them, like killing Hive on the Dreadnought or using a sniper rifle to get headshots in the Crucible. You can test as many of these weapons as you want, and once you hit a certain reputation level with the gunsmith, he's going to open up an Arms Day purchase. And this is where you pay Glimmer to order a new legendary weapon, and on Wednesdays that weapon's going to arrive with a random set of perks. Things are getting more immersive in Destiny, and that brings us to quests. Quests are a big part of year two, and in the weekly update on July 10th, they went over some of these changes, and each quest it's going to have steps that's going to guide you to the finish line, not only for the Taken King, but for all Destiny content. And through sections of your progression, quests are going to be unlocked from Vanguard vendors. And Bungie has talked highly about these quest lines in Year 2 in the Taken King, and these types of things I'm really excited about. They also have your ghost to opt in to give you more details on structures and lore, and you can now press a button and bring up information in real time as you're going through the story. And Nolan North was casted for the Taken King to take place for the ghost voice. And he also redid the lines all the way up prior to the Taken King. They wanted the experience from when you get first woken up all the way to level 40 to be seamless, so I'm really glad that they did that. And some of the quests include the new subclass quests, and the article covers that as a Titan, to learn the power of the sun, you will meet up with a rogue mercenary clan of Titans and become Sunbreaker. And with Ikora Ray, the Warlock will do a ritual to harness the power of the storm. And finally, the Hunter gets a little bit of void in their life. The quest involves you hunting down a rogue Hunter, who holds the key to embracing the void. And with all these subclasses, it will bring so much to the game. And it goes on saying that all the original missions have been reorganized, contextualized, and placed within a larger quest framework. Even older subclasses will have dedicated quest lines. It's going to help explain their origin. 
So things like the Striker or Defender Titan, maybe they might tell a story on how hunters learned Blink from Warlocks. And go ahead and check out the rare Nemesis Plain Warlock boots in the Planet Destiny database for a quick laugh. So I can't wait to do those quests. Bungie is also adding replayability to the previous expansions like the Eris Morn quest line. That's now going to lead you to a forgotten weapon type, the article states, and I wonder what that is. So you're going to see eight plus longer styled missions that's going to tie in with class quests, strikes, public events, and eventually it's going to lead us to the new raid, King's Fall. But it's not going to stop there. Once you complete the main storyline, you're then going to gain access to the Taken War event, which is going to include harder narrative-driven missions that have us revisiting old locations like the Vault of Glass. And in the article, he goes on talking about how in the mission of Vault of Glass, it gives us some answers to what happened to Praetith. So we get three new strikes, PS4 users get four, one of them being exclusive, plus three redesigned older strikes. And Bungie has said that these Taken are just going to start overrunning our worlds. So these new Taken enemies, they're going to add a little bit more depth to the game. Taken Captains, they have solar shields and throw out slow-moving spears of darkness that can blind you. Taken Knights have a scorch melee that is an area of effect damage. Taken Centurions have tracking shots and aggressively seek you around corners. Taken Wizards can summon Shadow Thralls, and that's just its going to add more to the mayhem. It's going to be awesome. Taken Scions can multiply if you don't dispose of them quickly. Taken Vandals can restore their health by deploying a shield similar to the Defender Titan shield. Taken Phalanxes have an impulse blast that works like their shields. And just from this small sample of PvE information that we've received from this article, you can kind of get a feeling for how big the Taken King truly is. They have also added to their Crucible game mode. Eight new maps, three new game modes, and the modes are Mayhem Rift and Zone Control. Zone Control, it focuses on teamwork to control the zones, and the score is based solely on objectives held and not adding kills into the score. They've also included five weekly bounties in addition to much faster daily bounties, and when you finish all five of those weekly bounties, you will then unlock a massive one at the end, and it's going to give you a chance at a powerful reward like a legendary and exotic weapon. They also emphasized on better matchmaking for skill and connection, and the Crucible will now have a mercy rule that will end dramatically misbalanced matches early. Because how many times have you been thrown into a game where you're losing 12,000 to 3,000, the enemy team has heavy, they have supers, and maybe this mercy rule will end those situations before they even begin. It's something to be excited about. And lastly, let's talk about one thing that we cherish the most, gear. And just from what they saw at the build at Bungie, there were over 30 exotics spotted. Over a dozen new exotic weapons, a half dozen new armor pieces for each class, and it added that many of the exotics are going to be obtained through the established idea of exotic quest lines. There's an arc pulse rifle called No Time to Explain, it's an exotic version of the Stranger's Rifle, and a sniper rifle that blinds enemies on precision hits. And it really makes me wonder what the impact's going to be, because low impact snipers cannot one shot a revived enemy in the Crucible, but what if you hit him in the head when he comes up and you blind him? Like, I can't wait, I can't wait to learn more, so. The Sleeper Stimulant, a heavy fusion rifle, it charges an over-penetration laser through enemy targets and bounces off walls, and they reference an exotic gain through a multi-step search quest on the Dreadnought, with pieces hidden all over for you to find. Now all exotic, unique namesake perks are going to be immediately unlocked, even for your older exotics gained after when the Taken King launches. So like your same of Help 14, you're going to get it and be able to blind enemies right when you put that helmet on, you're not going to have to rank it up. And we all know that when you get a new exotic like a helmet, it's just a helmet when you put it on, right? There's nothing special about it. So they're making it to where the item feels exotic and powerful once you get it and put it on. So that's going to wrap things up. The Taken King is featured in September's Game Informer magazine, so be sure to pick it up and give it a look. And let us know in the comments which update or change you're looking forward to the most. Thank you for watching. I am Cool Guy, and stay tuned to Planet Destiny for continued coverage of the Taken King. We've angered a god, the Taken King who promises to bring our destruction. Most would think it wise to run. But we're the line between survival and extinction. We're guardians, and guardians don't flee, they fight.